Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is going to be on vitals and pulses in my cardiac lecture number six covering hemodynamics. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is pulses. Okay, so pulses are found, you know, peripherally. Hold on. Look at my drawing here. And when we're checking pulses, like in the previous lecture I talked about, depends on where we're checking, right? And what's the purpose behind the checking? Like if there's a procedure and then there's a pulse, well, it's about perfusion and whether or not there's a problem with perfusion or not. Um, so let's get into it. What's kind of some of the findings that we see? Normal. So normal, um, normal pulse should be uh, normal and that means that normal hemodynamics are going on so that means that the pump is filled that means that the heart is also okay and is pumping and there's good cardiac output and so we can feel pulses in all area, areas and they'll be regular if they are irregular we might think it might be something like AFib and AFib is an irregular rhythm there are some other reasons, but please see my other lecture on irregular rhythms. All right, so the next thing is um, absent. So an absent pulse. All right. Well, like I said before, on procedural, if you have a procedure that's going on and you have an absent pulse, it's about perfusion. It means that the person's not, and that's going to be acute, most likely. Um, so if we don't have any pulses with a procedure, it's generally an NCLEX is going to be uh, an acute finding, and a doctor should be notified, and that's the most likely. Um, the next is a uh, weak and thready. Well, weak and thready is underlying, and what happens is is that it doesn't really have an amplitude to it, where a normal one's going to have a dichrotic notch and all that stuff. It doesn't really have an amplitude to it, and so it's weak. And that means the heart might be okay, but there's just not enough fluid. So it, it doesn't have the capacity to give you a pulse. So if you press down that vessel, you kind of don't really feel that volume. And that's what's going on. It's telling you that there's a volume. We can check, assess other things like a CVP or a PAWP if we have them. Or look at the patient, you know. Are they cool, clammy, diaphoretic? Um, but if they're septic, they won't be. They'll be uh, warm. Okay, uh, some other things uh, why it might be weak is severe per uh, peripheral vascular disease. You know, they're really clamped down. Or the patient ha are on vasopressors. So if you have medications on board like uh, neosinephrine or level fed, level fed, leave them dead. Um, these are pretty strong vasopressors. And what I mean by that is V for clamping. And where vessels normally like this, but we really squeeze them. And that's going to affect the blood pressure, the pulse, I mean. All right, so the next thing is bounding. Well, there is actually a range here, you know, one plus one plus two, up to four. Um, and when we're looking at that, what we see is, is that it's underlying cause. And the reason for that um, could be because of um, anemia. Because what's happening is, is that, you know, when somebody is anemic, you know, the heart is functioning fine, right? So it's trying to compensate because of this anemia. And there's not enough um, red blood cells. And so what happens is the heart starts to pump harder and you get this bounding pulse. But that also might mean that the person has CHF. So where a vessel might be normally like this, they get so much fluid on board that it's bounding. And um, that's also acute. Um, what else could be happening? Uh, aortic regurge. Right? So aortic regurge, right? so we talked about this in a previous lecture on the right-sided versus left-sided heart where aortic, right, so try pulling uh, my aorta, aortic, it's on the left side, that's acute. And aortic re regurge 
over time means that it's regurging back into this vessel. Well, it becomes kind of problematic for the vessel and you get this bounding pulse that starts to come from it. Uh, what else? Uh, and it might just be because of aging and stuff like that and vasculature. So the next one is uh, pulseless alterons. All right, so what does that mean? Well, it's alternating. So it's kind of um, what happens is, is that it's high and then it's low. It's high and then it's low. All right, so it's alternating, alternates, right? So what's the reason for that? Well, again, you know, uh, aortic regurge. It's on the left side. Um, also uh, hypertrophic. Now, what is hypertrophic? I covered this in another lecture, more of my comorbidity lecture as well. And that's usually because of aortic regurge. So when you have the atrium and the ventricle, and you have this aorta valve, and there's this regurge going back into this heart, what happens is, is this heart, over time, starts to model. And what it starts to do is get really big. And what happens, because it's so big, that's called hypertrophy. I call it big trophy hearts. And hypertrophy, what happens is there's not enough fluid, not enough blood can be in here. So the cardiac output starts to decrease. Or you start to have it good on one side, but bad on the other side, and you see this alternates. So weak and then strong, weak and strong. All right, so the next one is um, uh, pulses by Geminis, right? So pulses by Geminis are usually um, related to kind of uh, PVCs. So uh, what it is is that you basically have um, alternating strong and um, weak pulse as well. And, and it's usually after a strong pulse. So it's kind of the same. So how do you differentiate between alterans and bigeminus is that you put them on a monitor, lead two, and you're going to look for PVCs or PACs, okay? And that would be for bigeminus, right? However, alterons, you might be looking for the underlying cause, which would be aortic stenosis. And how would you find out aortic stenosis? Well, we could look at an echo for that. And an echocardiogram is a non-invasive ultrasound. I'm not talking about a TEE, which is a transesophageal where you stick a tube down somebody's throat to look at their heart. An ultrasound is done where a person's on their side and um, you put the ultrasound on their Wrote on their heart. And you basically look at the structure. And we get usually an ejection fraction from that, but you can see regurge from that as well. Also, uh, the next one is um, unequal pulses. Okay, so pul unequal pulses are generally um, on different sides. And they're very acute. Okay, so unequal pulses, if you have a good pulse on one side and a smaller pulse on the other side or the unequal, um, we're looking at acute findings like cardiac tamponade um, or uh, dissecting aortic aneurysm where they're bleeding out. That's acute. So whenever you find unequal pulses, that's always a doctor's call and it's an evaluation. It's not a normal findings. Um, and that's about it as far as pulses. Pulses are pretty cool because pulses you can really kind of get down to the nitty gritty. It's a good assessment tool that we check when we're looking at the patients to see what's going on. It's going to tell us, can kind of lead us to the next area. If we see it on an NCLEX question and they're talking about these pulses, it's about assessment. And assessment is everything. And it's saying, do we understand the assessment to equal what is going on with the patient? And what's the problem? And then whether or not it is acute or, or not. And do we have hemodynamics to back it up for the data? All right, that's about it. My name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, Google, and Twitter, and nursingcamp.com. That's about it. Nurse on, and we'll see you next time.